In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Nunlight Pavo Tube 6Cs and doing a bit of an unboxing and then also telling you how you can download and install the new firmware and also use it with the mobile app. So if that sounds interesting, stick around. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec, and uh, this is actually the first sort of official non-vlogmas video uh, from my new studio. And so one of the things that I wanted for the new studio space, because I couldn't just add colors in a virtual background anymore, was some actual lighting in the background. As you can see, I'm still a bit lacking in that. <laughs> but one of the things that I did do was invest in a couple of these Nanlite Pavotube 6Cs. Uh, and so uh, that is what I'm gonna be talking about today and doing a bit of an unboxing. now. I have actually unboxed it already, but I put it back in the box just for you, <laughs> just so that you could see what is in the box. And then after that, as I mentioned, we'll have a look at uh, how you can download, install new firmware. There's a little bit of a knack to that. Uh, and then also how you can set it up with the mobile app so that you can control them all, multiple ones from your mobile phone. And yes, there is a slight blue tinge in the background, and that is because... I've got one of them on a stand just behind me. <laughs> so I have got lots, uh, lots more plans for this studio space and I uh, will be building it out and obviously sharing all of that journey with you along the way. Uh, but this was, as I say, just the first little step. So let's get straight to it and uh, let's get on with this unboxing of a reboxed boxed item. <laughs> so in the box, we have got, first of all, there are some instructions in here uh, in a nice little uh, protective plastic <laughs> bag just in case uh, you drop the box in the water uh, I wouldn't recommend that uh, that's also got the warranty card as well so do read those with care and attention obviously uh, then in the top we've got this little packet of uh, small metal plates which I shall come to on in a moment uh, and there's basically just three of them in there uh, in fact there's two one of them's fallen out <laughs> there you go uh, and they're just little metal plates but as I say I'll come to that in a moment uh, and then we've also got the uh, actual light itself which is in a very nice little carry case because with the size of these they're about 10 inches long uh, 25 centimeters uh, and not too heavy they are really good little uh, uh, things to carry with you when you're traveling uh, especially if you're doing lots of zoom calls things like that uh, having some good lighting on the go always helps uh, and then, sorry, I've just uh, <laughs> dropped it on a button on my uh, laptop. Then also in the back, we have got a uh, cable, which is USB 3 to uh, USB-C. Uh, and then we've also got this little lanyard with a little screw fitting, which is uh, typical sort of for uh, camera and lighting, a quarter 20 uh, thread. Uh, and that, as you'll see in a moment, if I take the actual light out of the bag, like that. <laughs> On the back, you have got a, uh, a charging port, uh, five buttons, which we'll come to in a moment, a little small uh, screen, but then in either end, you've got a screw fitting. So you can actually screw this on if you want to carry it around your wrist <laughs> or want to secure it somewhere but obviously also you can just uh, attach it to any sort of uh, stand that you may have lying around uh, such as i've got there with that uh, lighting stand so it's just screwed onto the top of that or you could use it with a little camera tripod or something like that if you want it on the ground angled up at a wall or what have you uh, but the other thing about it and incidentally the reason for these little metal uh, pieces here is that you'll notice Perhaps you won't notice. Maybe if I make it clearer. <laughs> there you go, put it against a white background. The light is kind of rounded on the front where the actual light is, uh, but then on the back, you've got it sort of squared off and then these two angled sides at the back as well. Uh, and there's actually magnets in, the, uh, in both ends around these three sides. So you can see that these metal plates uh, basically are magnetic uh, and will attached to the small metal plate uh, and so what that means is that what they uh, include them for is that you can actually just use gaffer tape or something like that to tape these onto a wall uh, and so then you can just attach this to uh, random places as you see fit but the beauty of it being uh, sort of three-sided is it means that if you are say on a wall and you want it to shine uh, sort of up at the the back wall for example uh, then you can angle it slightly like that or you can have it angled out to the side or angled a different way the same if you were to attach this to a metal shelf for example you could have it underneath the shelf and you may want it I should probably change my camera angle <laughs> like that. You may want it angled down or you may want it angled forwards or backwards or something like that. So that is the reason for those little angles. Uh, and it works quite well, really. You can uh, attach it to uh, any metal surface. Uh, one thing to note is 
although the magnets are technically quite strong, you can see it uh, fits quite strongly there, uh, it does take quite a light touch to actually sort of pull it off. So if I was to uh, touch it, uh, mount it to a, a wall, for example, uh, I wouldn't need to pull it too hard for it to come off, which in one way is good, but in another way is a little bit disconcerting. I'm always worried that if I were to uh, mount it to the uh, the side of a shelf, if I were to knock it, would it come off very easily? Uh, so that is just something to uh, to bear in mind. But still, it's good to have multiple ways to uh, mount these things. So let's have a little look, shall we, at uh, what happens when we switch it on. So I'll come back to the, uh, the top-down shot and uh, just move some of these things out of the way. And uh, yeah, we've basically got uh, five buttons, as I say. So the first one is the power button and you actually press and hold that one. You'll notice when I press it that there is sort of bars that come up on the little LCD screen there uh, and you press and hold. And then once the Nanlite logo appears, uh, then it comes on. There are three different sort of core modes and then multiple settings for each mode. Uh, and there are basically four menus or four sort of menu folders if you like <laughs> so one for each of the uh, different settings and then one for the sort of overall uh, settings of the uh, the light so I'll start with uh, the first one which is the sort of white light so uh, you can basically change the, uh, the the brightness of it so from 0 to 100% uh, and then you can go down and change the uh, color temperature so that goes from 2700 to uh, 7500 so you can change the uh, the temperature of the light like that uh, and then you've also got a gamma setting as well uh, which goes from uh, plus 100 to minus 100 <laughs> uh, and zero being in the middle uh, which is the uh, default setting uh, and so that's the level of control that you've basically got over the uh, the white light now if I uh, press this button it will cycle to the sort of next menu or sorry this one to the next function uh, and that is the colored light and here again you've got the brightness so you can change that between funnily enough zero and 100 percent then the next one you've got uh 360 is the different number of uh, colors that you can basically have so uh the full sort of spectrum there and so if i just cycle through these you'll notice it changing all through with the uh, various colors of the uh, spectrum uh, and then if i press it again i can change the saturation so that is basically the uh, sort of the saturation of that color so uh, 100 being fully saturated <laughs> and if i was to go down all the way down to zero uh, then basically it would be changing from the colored light to white i.e with no color in there at all so that is basically the uh, i think probably the most useful uh, functions the colored light and the uh, the white light uh, but there is another one which is sort of special functions uh, and here you can basically cycle through uh, a number of different uh, types of uh, lighting effects basically so this one is called a uh, police car so flashing red and blue uh, inside each of these as well you can change the uh, the brightness of them uh, so i can imagine you know if you were doing some sort of uh, stage lighting or something like that and you wanted the effect of these things then this is obviously the use case for them in your videos I'm not probably not going to be doing this sort of thing in my videos but uh, I shall just tell you about the different functions that there are nevertheless uh, and so yes you've got the uh, the name of the the function which in this case is police car uh, and then you've got the brightness uh, and then you've got different things like the speed and the different colors that you're going to cycle through uh, and then let's have a look at some of the other effects so there's police car uh, this one is storm so simulating obviously lightning uh, this one is hue pulse which is just pulsing on whatever color the, you had the uh, uh, the hue setting on before uh, same for the uh, white light so again pulsing at whatever color the white light was set to uh, hue flash flashing with that color and the white flash as well uh, and then you've got one that's basically looping through all of the different uh, uh, colors of white or grades of white whatever you want to call it whatever the technical term is it's escaping me at the moment <laughs> the next one is uh, the same just looping through different uh, whites and then finally we've got the uh, different hues and it's just basically cycling through all of those colors again with each of these there are lots of settings so you can change the brightness the speed the range of uh, hues that it's going through so this is 0 to 360 going through them all you could have it going through a smaller range of the spectrum if you just wanted to have it sort of cycling through a particular range of the spectrum uh, and then the speed as well so in seconds so we've got eight seconds here uh, next one whoops a daisy I'm getting a bit ahead of myself uh, next one we've got is also uh, welding <laughs> so if you want to simulate somebody welding nearby in your videos then these are the lights for you we've also got explosion which is obviously just going to be random occasional uh, flashes uh, we've got fireworks so uh, again random colors 
Uh, we've also got one called Bad Bulb, which I find is exceptionally amusing for a uh, very accurate, color accurate video light to simulate uh, very poor quality lights. So uh, there is that one as well. Then there is Disco, which is just, as you can see, a range of flashing colored lights uh, and a candle firelight setting. And then Paparazzi being uh, a flash and then TV flickering in the background effect. And then I think we're back to the police car. So that is the uh, the sort of effects that you can get from it <laughs> for what they're worth uh, and then the next sort of main menu so that is the we've got the the white menu the uh, colored light menu uh, and then we've got the uh, the effects menu if you like whatever you want to call that uh, and then the next one is the sort of main settings of the uh, of the the light so the first one is channel two uh, which is <laughs> the first one is the channel so you can have multiple channels for these lights so that when you are controlling them with either a, a remote or the uh, or the app then you can select different lights to have uh, different colors so there's different channels for each light and you can have multiple different lights in the room uh, the next section next uh, menu item rather is the language so uh, we want to if you want to change the language uh, you can change the wireless protocol. Uh, I've just left that as it was on version two, <laughs> as opposed to version one. Uh, not sure quite of the significance of that yet, if I'm totally honest. Uh, and the next one is a uh, Bluetooth reset. So you can actually reset the Bluetooth if you've got it paired with different devices. Uh, and then the next one is one to actually look, which is the version of the firmware. So here it's saying I've got version 1.00.11, which happens to be the latest version. But I have to say it wasn't the latest version when I got them. And in fact, uh, although I but bought two at the same time from the same supplier uh, they did have different firmware versions on and one was slightly older but none of them neither of them were the latest version so uh, let me just switch off the light for a moment just so that you don't get uh, dazzled by all of the uh, the flashing lights <laughs> so uh, that is basically a rundown of the different uh, functions of them and uh, the build quality is excellent I'll show you just quickly before we get onto the uh, the firmware. I'll just quickly show you uh, the website. In fact, I've got one step ahead. That is the firmware download. <laughs> there you go. There's the website uh, for Nanlite. I'll obviously leave a description, uh, leave a link for this in the description. And uh, there are a few options. So I just got the lights on their own, but you can also get them uh, with different things like a ball head fitting uh, with uh, two tubes together and then a joining fitting between them to make them uh, double length, obviously. Uh, and then there's a few other different uh, options that you've got for them. Uh, those are even longer ones. So these are the um, uh, six C's, but then also you have got some uh, longer versions of them as well. Uh, now, if I just come down here, there are a few different accessories, none of which I actually got, but uh, one of them is the fabric grid. So if you want to be a bit more directional with the light, then there is a uh, grid available for them. Uh, a waterproof bag, if you intend to uh, do any uh, underwater filming <laughs> or out in the rain. Uh, there's also, which could be useful actually, a um, battery pack which would screw onto the bottom uh, and then is basically just plugs directly into the, uh, the charging socket on the back uh, and that does extend the life. So it does tell you, by the way, the, uh, the amount of time that you've got remaining. So if I just switch them on and go to a, a very plain setting, uh, what you'll see here is it tells you the time remaining. So at the moment you can see I've got uh, nearly full battery and it says 0.8 hours remaining. But if I were to dim it down to say 50% uh, or thereabouts, uh, what you'll see is the time instead of 0.8 is now 1.8 hours. So uh, that will change accordingly as you, uh, as you increase that. You can just plug in any old uh, power bank because as you saw, the cable is just a regular USB 3. So you can just plug the USB 3 into your power bank uh, and then the USB-C into the, uh, the Pavo tube. Uh, you can also just have it wired obviously directly into a USB socket uh, and then power it that way as well. So you don't have to worry about the battery life. Just coming back to, uh, I keep going to the wrong uh, page there. <laughs> Just coming back to this. The last thing is you can also get a remote, uh, which uh, is pretty cheap really, $12.99. And that allows you to adjust the, uh, the color and thing like that of them. But what I'm gonna show you now is also how to uh, download and install the firmware because with the firmware update, if you've got one of the older versions, uh, you can actually link it to the Nanlink app, which will allow you to do some pretty interesting things with choosing your colors and so on. So let's have a little look at that. Uh, I'll leave a link to this obviously in the downloads as well in the, uh, <laughs> in the description. But basically what we're gonna do here is go to this uh, page 
uh, and then you'll see that there are some different firmware updates available. Uh, this is the regular page and it will just keep updating with the latest firmware, so worth uh, saving this one. Uh, and all you do is click on firmware version 1.00.0. One, one, and that will uh, download the latest version. It tells you what's uh, in here. So it's added the app control function. Uh, and so just download that and then it will take you through once you've downloaded it to a zip file. And once you expand this, it will bring you to uh, this folder, which has got some documentation, but there is then this UPD file. All you need to do is copy that onto a uh, thumb drive. Uh, so <laughs> something like this, but bear in mind that the uh, the socket on the back of the uh, the Pavo tube uh, is actually a uh, USB C. So if you haven't got a flash drive that is USB C, you may just need to get one of these little adapters, uh, which is basically USB three or regular USB to USB C, and you just plug it in like that, uh, and then that means that then you can update the firmware on the uh, on the light. All you do for that is you just literally plug this into the back of the light with the light switched off uh, and then switch the light on and it will instantly recognize that you've got the uh, the firmware on the the flash drive uh, and so it will just ask you do you want to install this uh, and then you just click yes and that is about as complicated as it gets so once you've done that and you've got the latest uh, firmware then you can actually control it with your app on your phone so i'll just uh, quickly show you how to do that uh, if I just bring up my uh, phone, what you want to do is search for the Nanlink app. Again, I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, and then once you've got that and downloaded it, you will need to create an account. Uh, but once you open the app, it's uh, pretty straightforward to, uh, to create the account. Uh, and then when you want to link it with your lights, all you do is you come into here. There's a little sort of, uh, they actually call that the hamburger, <laughs> that uh, little symbol at the top with three bars. You click on that and click on new scene. Uh, give it a name, so I'll call this, uh, let's just call this studio, shall we? Uh, and click on create. And then once you've done that, click into that particular uh, uh, scene. So obviously you can imagine you can create multiple different scenes with different lighting setups and things like that. Uh, and you've got this big plus button. So, and it says tap to add a new fixture. So if I click on this one now, uh, and then we can choose via 2.4G or via direct Bluetooth. And you can see it does actually say that a transmitter box is required for the 2.4G, whereas Bluetooth is direct contact uh, connect. So if I click on that one, then it should just bring up the different tubes that I've got. Uh, and I believe it is this top one that is the one that I've got on my desk as opposed to the other one. Uh, and although I can just select all of them, <laughs> silly me. Uh, and then I'll click done. And this is basically going to add those into the scene. So you can imagine if you've got lots and lots of different lights, you can add uh, multiple different ones in. Uh, and then in just a moment, when this is finished doing what it's doing, it's just taking a little moment. There we go. Uh, it has got this one. Now, this one was channel two, I seem to recall. So this one that I've got in my hand is that uh, second one down. Uh, and now what I can do is I can change all of the lighting settings. So if I uh, click on uh, that, you'll notice that the light just went off. Uh, click on it again, and it should come back on. And I can change the uh, the brightness of it by using these uh, different sliders here. I can also change the uh, color temperature. So I'm just, uh, <laughs> let me I tell you what, let me put this in the top down shot, shall I? And then you can actually see what's going on. So as I'm basically changing the, uh, the slider for the color temperature, it's changing the uh, color temperature of the white light and the gamma. So we've got all of the same controls that we had before. It's just actually a lot easier with these sliders. Uh, the mode, so the CCT mode is the uh, uh, the white mode. The uh, HSI is the one that's gonna have the different color uh, sections. So I can, uh, and you can see I've just got the wheel there. I can just literally move it to any color I want. Uh, it does make setting the colors really easy because you can just take it to a specific point. Uh, you've also got this one with sliders where you can change the hue and saturation. And again, you've got that zero to 360 uh, and then also the uh, percentage saturation as well. Uh, but the color wheel is really good. However, there is, I think, an awesome feature, <laughs> which is a little camera symbol. And if I click on the camera symbol, basically this just brings up a little pointer and you've got a little pointer in the middle uh, and you can just put that on any color that you want. So if I was to point it at this blue, for example, you can see that it's picking up the blue uh, in this sort of bar that is uh, down here <laughs> and it's picking up that particular color uh, and then I can just click on that one to take the uh, the image uh, and say done and now look at that it's actually changed to that color so if you've got uh, particular brand colors and things like this and you want your lighting to be on brand as well 
I think this is an awesome little app to uh, to be able to do <laughs> to do this with. Uh, and then you can also click on the little heart symbol there to uh, save it as a preset. So if you want to save that as a preset, you can do that way. Uh, and if I come back out, uh, then this is how we uh, basically set up these fixtures with the uh, different lightings. Uh, and then if I, uh, different lighting setups. <laughs> and then if I come out from here, and let me come back to this shot. Uh, and then basically in here, you can see we've got studio. Well, I could just keep going and adding uh, all new different scenes and things like that. There's not a lot in the uh, settings section. So it's just some basic things for uh, account settings, language, uh, things like that. Uh, prevent device sleep if you want to uh, make sure that the device doesn't go to sleep. Personally, I'll probably just be opening the app, switching on the lights, and then that will be that. So I hope you found that useful and uh, you think these are pretty cool lights because I'm pretty impressed with them, to be honest with you. And they do uh, just what I want for the, uh, the studio. I'm just looking down at my stream deck. One thing about moving into a new studio space is nothing's still quite exactly where I expect it. I've also changed my, uh, <laughs> just going on a bit of an aside here, my uh, desk configuration. So I'm no longer sitting down. <laughs> I'm actually standing. Uh, and that means my stream deck's a little bit further away than I was normally expecting it. <laughs> but anyway, that is all for this video. And uh, I will give you another update after I've been using them for a while to, uh, to let you know how they're going. And you can expect over time there to be a steady increase in the amount of lighting in the background going on in my uh, my studio <laughs> if you found this useful though please do go ahead and like the video and subscribe and why not share it with all your friends and family who might also be interested in this sort of content but for me for now that is all but don't go anywhere because i've got loads of other great videos that are coming up right now over on the right hand side <laughs> have an absolutely wonderful day everyone and i will see you soon